Right now, we, we, we talk about managing our time wisely, and I told you uh, it's, it's good to trade when there's volume in the market, knowing that we can trade the um, my London session, Asia session, and pre-London, and I spoke about overlapping and all of that. I believe we know that. Then now uh, we talk about the days, Tuesday, very, very important, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday kind of, then Friday up to midday. Those are days we should trade then. Inside those days, we choose the best time where we have um, so much volume in the market, which is between 2 p.m. West African time to 6 p.m. West African time and around 1 a.m. West African time to like probably 3 a.m. And also, I think in the morning, between 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. West African time. So... Those are times we need to kind of always uh, watch out and make use of the opportunity or whatever that is in the market. So that's about that. Now, also, we spoke about best time to trade. I told you I'm still going to teach us how we can manage to trade ourselves so we can work with whatever professions we are into. So we know, even though we know the best day, we'll be able to know the best time. Then we'll be able to know the best time frame that is good for for us to trade then we have the worst time to trade out on sundays fridays holidays and major news events yeah i can i can agree to that because whenever there is news event the market moves crazy you can kick the buyer and the seller at the same time and it's not going to look as if your 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 setup was buy is it because of the news because people react to the news uh differently do you understand and during holiday, you know, a lot of people are not active, so definitely the market might be sluggish and all of that. And also, uh, Fridays, I told you Fridays, you can just trade till midday uh, on Friday. And on Sunday, of course, uh, it's always, always busy when the market opens late, late on Sunday, you understand. So those are kind of the worst days that you can think of, you know, that you can think of trading. And that's that about this session. So let's move to the next module. Uh, let's move to the next module. Let me see what's the next module over here. Yeah, let's move to the next module, which is now Forex market structure. And under this structure, we're going to be talking about, I'm going to be teaching us some things we need to understand, which is very, 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 very important. Very, very important. You see, uh, the structure they want to show us here is just how the, the market work. But talking about technical analysis too, we have the structure on how you, you know, you get to understand when you need to buy, when you need to sell and all of that, you understand. So now for the sake of comparison, let us first examine the market that most folks are probably very familiar with, which is the stock market. This is how the structure of the stock market looks like. We have the buyer. We have uh, the, the master of the universe, which is the centralized market, and we have the seller. And if you remember from the beginning of this uh, training, when we started, I told you for a trade to be executed, for any buyer, there must be a seller. For any seller, there must be a buyer. And if you lose money, someone is making money. That is how Forex works, because you're exchanging currencies. You understand? So if you buy a currency a hundred dollar and you want to sell it back and you're getting eighty dollar, that twenty dollar you lost on it. Someone is gaining it. Someone that believed the dollar was going to fall and that shot the dollar at when you you were buying it a hundred dollar. You understand? So and that's where uh, that's where they show you know, the structure. Then I say all traders must go through this specialist because of this price can easily be altered. To benefit the specialist and not the traders you understand they're talking about the manipulations that happens in the forex market and that's why i'm not really happy i'm excited but not really happy these institutions that are getting into cryptos through etfs you understand because they don't want to own it directly true etfs means they can pump in so much volume and manipulate the market a bit you understand you can see blackrock has done about one billion bitcoin etf asset under management in just less than how many days they've started you understand so we don't know what will come of it in the future but once we know how to trade and we can read the market 
it's going to help us a lot and we're going to do better when it comes to that then i said um in in the specialist which is forced to fulfill the order of its client the seller in case is left with a bunch of stock that it cannot sell off to the buyer in order to prevent this from happening especially we simply widen the spread or increase the transaction cost to prevent seller from entry the market you can see some manipulation they do because they feel like if they buy the stock too much and they don't have the buyer to sell off it's going to be a problem of them because they have to execute the trade so they're going to show the spread whereby the commission will be too high and you'll be like no 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 i can't take a trade and who is doing that in in cryptocurrency is ethereum we all know about ethereum projects some of them when the gas fee is too high some of us we don't want to trade because we'll be like no 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 this is just too crazy and we don't want to get into the trade so same thing is what they're trying to explain to us over here then as a trading spot fx is decentralized unlike trading stocks or futures you don't need to go through a centralized exchange like the new york stock exchange with just one price in forex market there is no single price for giving currency at any time which means quotes from different currency dealers and you can see we have the chart here where we have the decentralized market. We have the bank, bank two, bank one, you know, everybody is selling to each other, you understand, till it gets down to other, uh, you know, markets maker like Warren Buffett and all of them that they've made so much money from trading. Now, they say the Forex ladder, you can see the FX ladder, we have the major banks, the electronic broker, that's the EBS. We have the medium size and the small banks. We have the retail market. We have the retail ECN. We have the edge funds and we have the retail traders like us. You can see, so before it gets to the top, our like you and I now, when we place a trade through all these brokers, they take it to the medium banks. Medium banks take it to the EBS. EBS take it to the major banks of the, which are the JP Morgans, the chase banks and all of that and that's why they have the huge amount to move the market and we we do not have that so that's why we need to follow their footsteps we're still going to get to that that's when it comes to how we're going to be analyzing the market and know how you know we can make use of whatever their other blocks and all of that but we're still going to get to that in a bit and also we have the comparison between the ebs and the routers you might want to read that uh, you might want to read that up yourself because these are just a lot of explanations that you can understand yourself. So let's move to the next, uh, the next lesson. We've known this, the, the, the Forex structure, right? Now we're going to talk about the Forex market play, as you understand. Now that you know the overall structure of the Forex market, let's delve into a little deeper to find out who exactly are these people on the ladder. And it is essential for you to understand that the nature of the spot forex market, who are the main forex market player, is very important. Let's learn about the main uh, player in the forex market. And this is the show them here. Until 1990s, only the big boys could play the game. The initial requirement was you could trade only if you have up to 10 of the 50 million bucks to start with it. The Forex was originally intended to be used by bankers and large institutions, not by us little folks, you know, we, the, 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 the traders, the $10, $20 people. How can, however, because of the rise, the, the rise of the internet, online Forex brokers are now able to offer trading account to retail traders like us, you understand? So now the, the hierarchy comes like we have the super bank. When it comes to forex trading, commercial banks and financial institutions are the movers and the shakers. And now we have them in cryptocurrencies now. You understand? Through the ETFs, we're going to be seeing a lot of investors coming over the next 12 months or two years to come. And we're going to see crazy uh, manipulation going on in the industry. Since the forex spot market is decentralized, it is the largest bank in the world that determines the exchange rate. They are responsible for most of the day trading volume and they make their money by acting as market makers. This means when they're constantly buying or selling currency, pocketing the difference between the bid and ask prices. 
It is high stake games, but these banks have the deep pocket and expertise to play what it takes in the game. This large bank, collectively known as the interbank market or interdealer market, take on ridiculous amount of forex transaction each day for both their customers and themselves. Like I told you, uh, the, the 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 forex maker, the institutions, they are the one that move the market because they they put in billions of dollars into the market and that moves the market up and down. That's why it's easy to liquidate, you know, somebody like you and I that were just trading with little of money. Imagine your hundred dollar fighting billions of dollars. How can you survive? But when you follow their footsteps, you can at least pick on the crumbles, you know, they left behind. So uh, you can see how it works here. These are the big monsters, Citibank, JP Morgan, UBS, Barclays, Deutsche Bank, Goldman Sachs, HSBC, and Bank of America. You understand? They've been the ones that have been ruling the game for years. Then number two, we have the electronic liquid provider. You understand? Electronic liquid provider has specialized firms that have grown to be major player in the foreign exchange. You understand? In the foreign, by using advanced technology and trading algorithm to provide liquidity to the market, participant and the ELPs are like the Citave security securities excuse me flow traders HC tech jump trading and so on and so forth then we have the large commercial companies these are companies like you know excuse me like the Apple MOSFET exchange on the Japan yen before purchasing the electronic from Japan and we see some of the corporations like company take part in forex exchange also you know and this is what they do just for instance apple must first exchange is us dollars for japan yen before purchasing anything from japan so if they want to do that now they need to change their money and you all know apple google and all these big companies they are big so whatever they want to do in the market they do it in billions too you understand so they can move the market as well you understand since the volume they trade is much smaller than the interbank market this type of market player typically deals with commercial banks for their transactions you understand major and acquisition between large companies can also create currency exchange rate fluctuations. So these are the hierarchies that affect whatever we're seeing, the moves we're seeing. The market. That's why when you hear some news, the market reacts to it. Maybe you see that, oh, China is not going to open a plant in, ah, Apple is not going to open a plant in China. You see that the China money will go up because people will believe that for them to do anything, they need to pay in China currency and that will add value to the economy and that will make the currency go up. You understand? That's why we see a lot of people always, you know, a step ahead when they hear news like that. And that's what we call fundamental trading, using the economic or economic event that is happening in the real time to judge what the future of the possibility or what the future of the currency will be like. And we see a lot of people taking that to advantage. Then the fourth one is government and the central bank. Government and central banks such as the European Central Bank and Bank of England or the Federal Reserve are regularly involved in forex market too. Just like companies, national government participate in forex market for their operations. You all know we know we have inter international trade whereby countries come to, you know, exchange their national resources or whatever they're trading between each other and they need to pay each other too you understand so we normally have what we call international trade payment and handling their foreign exchange reserve central banks are like the puppet master for forex exchange these big boys are responsible for implementing monetary policy that can move currency values and we all know even central banks they're the one that determine the interest rate and all of that to control the inflation and the amount of money in circulation in a country you understand and you can see they say here they are they are the ones who adjust the interest rate and control the money supply in in the economy so government and central banks to play a major role when it comes to uh what we see in cryptocurrency i can see someone okay it's just that side you can continue all right i've seen the message 
There are also instances when central bank intervene, either directly or verbally, in the forex market when they want to realign the exchange rate. Sometimes central banks think their currencies is too priced, you understand, it's too high or too low. So they start massive buy operation to alter the exchange rate. You know, those are things they do again. And when you see something like that, we're talking about billions of dollars and that also affects the market. The fifth one is now the speculators, you and I, you know, the speculators that will believe that BTC is going to go to 100,000 if the ETF is approved, or we believe BTC is going to go down to 40,000 if ETF is not approved, something like that. You know, currency speculation is act of buying and holding foreign currency in the hope of selling that currency at high exchange rate in future, just like what we do in future trading, you understand? We buy because we believe it goes up maybe in the next 15 minutes, one hour, it depends on the time frame we're using to trade, and we are going to sell and make some money and pocket it. You know, so we speculators too, we add to it. And this is contrary to those who buy currency to finance a foreign investment or to pay for imported products and services. In it, we win it. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is probably uh, the mantra of speculators. Speculation in forex market involves buying and selling of crypto, uh, I say cryptocurrency, currencies, either forex or cryptocurrencies. And speculators are focused on price fluctuations, and that's what we, we take advantage on, if you understand. We always take advantage of, oh, it's going to be a buy now, we buy, we take profit, we look at it, it's going to be a sell now, we sell we take profit. It is called speculation because uncertainty involved since no one know for sure whether the currency pair will go up or we come down. Talking about BDC and all of that. Traders assess the likelihood of either scenario before placing their trade. And you can agree with me. Everybody was saying when the ETF is approved, we're going to see the market's character. ETF approved, market is even down to 40000 from 49000 But that doesn't mean the uh, long run vision is not going to come to play because we can see volume, you know, trooping into all these companies. You understand? That is definitely going to add value or going to add to the market cap of the cryptocurrency in the nearest future. Do you understand? So, definitely that has something to do with the volume that comes into. The market. We have the edge funds and the prop firms. We have the retail traders as well, just like you and I, um, that we put money into trading. But you can see we are the little, little ones, you understand, because our money is not that much. But you know, when you add our ten dollar, five dollar, two dollar from different countries, different brokers up together, it amount to something as well. And we to uh take part in the market so you might want to read up all this uh, part also to understand more about what is going on in the market so let's go to another lesson uh, on this chart and we can see once upon a time forex trading was stuffy affair reserved for professionals and institutional investors alone but then a wave of technology advancement swept in and today the market is globally accessible to individual traders like you and i let's take the light tour through the history of forex trading and see how we got from pocket protectors to mobile apps and beyond the early days when forex trading was a member only club retail forex trader emerged in groovy 1970s after Brenton Woods system which had pegged global currency to U.S. dollar, you understand? And this resulting in two shifting floating exchange, blah, 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 blah. I think we can read that. This is just a little bit uh, history about how the old Forex thing started. And in 1990, when the internet era now, you know, came, people decided that, okay, we can allow the retail traders too to benefit from it. And we can reach out to a lot of people investing in all these assets. And that is why we have all these platforms being um, um, registered. And we are now known as retail forex traders, you understand, whereby it is very easy for individuals to trade. 
by allowing small trade sizes. You can even see as low as $10, you can buy BTC. As low as $10, you can trade Forex on all these brokers, you understand, thanks to the image of the internet and all of that that come to play. All like in the interbank market where the standard trade size is in millions, you understand, units. Retail brokers allow individuals to trade position size as little as 1,000 units. You know, with standard size is 100,000 units, you understand. But as a retail trader, you, you can trade up to 1,000, that's like 0 0.01 or 0 0.001, you understand? So that is what they're talking about over here. And the explosion of online Forex broker and trading platform. In the early 2000s, saw the explosion of online brokers, each eager to offer retail traders trading services. They would individual traders with promises of trading platform, educational resources, and accessible to leverage and that's where leverage comes in, whereby you can want to buy BTC. BTC costs 42000 but if you have $400 with leverage of 100x, you can buy one. You understand? But you can't just do that without knowing it, because if you don't understand it properly, you're going to lose your little $400 you're using as margin against the leverage or the trade you're about to take with a broker. And that's why we're doing what we're doing now to educate ourselves, to know the rule, and that's where we're starting from the scratch. So we understand what all this is all about. So when we get to the intermediate level, or when we get to the main thing, we don't we don't be asking questions that oh, what is this? What is that? Because we already you know get to know all these things from the scratch. So the increased competition among brokers led to tighten tighter spread, lower trading costs, and even and expansion of trading product beyond major currencies pair you know what they're trying to say here is because now there's now competitions we know and you can see before binance used to do shakara and all of that but now there's now bybit there's okx there's coinbase there's different platforms you can trade but the truth is you still need to trade with a reliable uh, exchange because all these cryptocurrency exchanges are not regulated yet you understand but i know we're still going to get to that phase where we're going to have them being regulated and some of them are going to you know just zip off and we won't see them again you understand when the regulations start hitting them hard so now today retail trader excuse me retail trader or forex trader have access to a wide range of trading platform including meta trader 4 and meta trader 5 c trader various proprietary proprietary platform developed by individual brokers you understand so we all know that we have a lot of forex broker out there and make sure you trade with a reg uh, registered and uh, licensed one and when it comes to cryptocurrencies we have a lot of exchanges over there i've mentioned a few now bybit binance and all of that coin w is even there where we're using for our ten dollar challenge you understand and so on and so forth, you understand? So you might want to check them out. The regulatory evolution and protection of retail traders, we've seen that in Forex, but yet is not yet in cryptocurrency. And that's why there's still so much noise, so much bubbles in cryptocurrency. But I bet you in the next five, 10 years, we're going to, you know, bust the bubbles and we're going to see the ones that will survive and the ones that won't be able to make it because we can see ETF is being approved. So definitely a lot of things will start happening in the space. And if you start now, you're going to be beneficial of this thing in the future. You understand? Because imagine you learn how to trade now, you know how to trade BTC very well. By the time the whole thing is now even more and more uh, regularized or how am I going to call it? Um, um, what will I call it? Um, license start trooping you'll be able to be confident and say, oh, I know this thing already. It's just for me to trade with the best uh, broker or the best exchange out there. So the growth of retail FX trading attract the attention of financial regulators who sought to protect individual traders from shady forex brokers and maintain market and trading integrity. You know, I told you we have broker bees. The broker bees are the white label broker where they don't take your trades to the interbanks. They just created a, a dashboard for you to trade because they know you're going to lose your money. They don't take your trade to the bank. They just leave your trade there. 
Once you lose the money, they pocket the money. They trade against you. But once you win, it becomes difficult for them to pay. And that's why I've seen a lot of broker, big brokers folding up. Because when there's always this time that you see a lot of their customers winning so much and paying them will now be able will now be difficult because they never took the trade to the interbank in the first place. You understand? So you need to be careful about that. And now we have, that's why they now introduce strict rules and requirements for Forex brokers. And we're expecting that to come to cryptocurrency too. But for the meantime, if you're trading on cryptocurrency, only put the money you want to use to trade on those exchanges. If you have any asset you invested in, put those assets in your cold wallet. You understand? You can buy all these nano wallets and all of that. Put your asset in and keep it. Or you can even use all these DeFi wallet. It's even still better, you understand? So in case anything happens to all these exchanges, you can still have your money or your asset to yourself. There's this saying, saying, not your keys, not your money. You understand? If you don't have the keys to those wallets, you don't have the say to it. And if anything should happen, your money is going. We've seen a lot that happen over the years. Last year, we saw like three companies even collapse or more, up to five companies. I can name them FTX, Luna, three arrows, and some others like that. They had issues, you understand? So we need to be careful. Though Binance, Bybit, uh, CoinW2, I don't know. We're just using them for our challenges, but I believe they've been proving themselves over the years. But what I'm still going to say, either any of these exchanges, don't keep your millions of dollars in them or thousands of dollars. Keep it in your cold wallet. Only put the money you can use or money you're ready to trade with in all these exchanges. And when you make so much money, make sure you withdraw and keep in your fiat money or you keep in all those other cryptocurrencies since we believe in them and keep it in your what? In your cold wallet. So that's what uh, that is all about. Talking about, um, uh, what will I call it? Talking about know your retail forex history and talking about forex brokers and how the internet came to give you an, an opportunity to be able to trade this. So I think we have seven minutes left. Uh, maybe I'll use the seven minutes to answer questions before I call it a night. And we can now start with um, the new topic next, um, what's it called? Next lesson, which is going to be probably on Monday. I don't know if we're going to have a class on on saturday which is tomorrow but we're going to talk about that so we have wide trade forex advantage of it you can read up before um before me if you download this you know we finish the the one two three module so you can read up on wide trade forex then we're going to discuss that together and from there we're going to move to margin trading 101 that's what we're going to be understanding more things about how we can you know, place trade and all of that. You can see we have so much to talk about about it. So next week is going to be very important. You don't want to miss the classes. So maybe we can take this one tomorrow. We can take this one tomorrow. Since this is not most important, we can take white trade forex. We can take it tomorrow just to round up the week, you know, to pay for yesterday lesson we missed. But next week from Monday, we're going to start from margin trading. And I think you don't want to miss it because that's when we're going to be discussing some important issues, talking about our free margin, our equity, our stop loss, our, you know, blah, 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 blah. And that goes with, um, what's it called? That goes with this, with our content as well. And I'm going to be using this content to show us a lot of things on the chat. Okay. So any question, please, you can unmute yourself, ask questions. Uh, okay, someone say it appears Coinbase is not accessible in some African countries. I'm curious. Yes, yes, yes. And it's because, uh, you know, Coinbase, the reason why most of these uh, institutions are using Coinbase because they believe they are trustworthy and their KYC is 100%. You understand? They don't mess around. You understand? But just that Coinbase, the charges are high. So I don't like using them. The, the charges are fucking high. You understand? But it's because of, I think... Of the reliability and all of that they charge so they can get a lot of money to work on their securities and all of that which is good which is a good thing so any other question please any other question we're going to discuss this tomorrow night you understand then from monday we're going to start from margin trading 
Okay, so any other question before uh, we call it a night? Five minutes more. If you have any question, you can drop in the comment section, uh, I say comment section chat box, or you can also unmute yourself and ask a question directly on live right now. Any question, please? Any question, please? And please, if you've not subscribed to my YouTube channel, you might want to support me with that. You can uh, go to Crypto 101, subscribe to the channel, then you can get all the stuff I normally drop uh, daily, and the chat is there for you to even kind of, you know, learn a lot from. So you can speak, sir. I see that you raise up your okay. hand. What's your question, please? Okay. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. Well, we are not. We are now starting our uh, trading like professionals. It's a good one. Yeah. So this is my question. Okay. This is my question. How does how does um, uh, forex trading or inflex or affect uh, crypto trading? Oh, okay. Okay. Let me let me tell you. Forex trading is is like the genesis of everything. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So the reason why we're starting to learn from forex trading is because I want us to understand everything from basics. Do you understand? Because crypto trading just, crypto started 10 years ago, don't get me wrong, but talking about the future trader and all of that just started some years ago when the SEC approved the futures ETF. Now we have the spot ETF approved too, you understand? So Forex trading is the currency that move the countries, whatever. So now for crypto trading to strive, Forex need to be draining out gradually by gradually. If we're going to be using cryptocurrency in the future, definitely the amount of money in Forex need to be shifting into cryptocurrency over a period of time. And that is why even when you have a major news that is affecting the Forex trading or the economy, you see it affects the cryptocurrency too. Let me give you an example now. Let's say the inflation is on the rise. The moment the inflation is on the right, that shows the money won't be what uh, won't be uh, good like that, and people will start looking at okay, where can they put their money in, and they can shift their money from the dollar and put it in cryptocurrency because they feel like that one inflation is not going to wreck their money. Can you understand? Hmm. Now let not talk about really? int let's talk about interest rate. If they increase interest rate now, it affects the currency. But how does it affect the uh, the cryptocurrency? I'm going to tell you. When they increase the interest rate, people don't want to take loan because they'll be like, there's too much interest to pay. They, there's there won't be enough job created. When there's no more job created, how can people get job? How can people make money? How can people now even think of saving and now invest in cryptocurrency? You see, so cryptocurrency is still like a baby. You understand? The market mm. cap is that one point something trillion. You can't compare it to eight trillion market cap. So forex is still affecting us indirectly. You understand? Because mm. the adoption is not still globally yet. What is globally adopted is still the fiat, is still the forex trading currencies, you understand? So we are just getting there, shifting the money from the forex trading to the cryptocurrency gradually, gradually, and it's going to take years. It's not what is going to happen overnight, you understand? It's not easy to just move 80 trillion into, no, it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to start gradually. So all these economy news they affect the cryptocurrencies too okay take for instance now when they release uh, the interest rate i bet you with you now the moment um united states start reducing interest rate you're gonna see cryptocurrencies start doing well why because the more they start reducing interest rates now many people will go out and borrow money and start starting up businesses and all of that before you know more job will be created People will be able to get more jobs. When people get more jobs, there will be money out there. When they get money out there, they've been waiting to put their money on something they believe is the best now, like gold and cryptocurrency. So you start seeing people now not making money from the event forex trading or whatever I created, and not putting the money in cryptocurrency. So forex trading still affects cryptocurrency in so many ways. In so so many ways, because let's be realistic. Before you load your USDT, what money did you use? 
you understand you have to change your Cameroonian whatever to to the USDT where do you get the Cameroonian for it's still from forex because forex has to do with foreign exchange do you get what I'm trying to say so the yes, thing sir. is going to cut us off now we're going to assemble tomorrow and thanks for the great questions more questions I can answer it in the $10 Thailand group um, anytime this is going to cut us off and that's all